successful people do what they hate to get to where they want to be. Belief without talent will take you far further than talent without belief. You'll never get it right. You're just not good at that. I want you to change that voice to a cheerleader. Need motivation? Watch your top 10 with Believe Nation. What's up, Believe Nation? It's Evan. I believe in you, and this channel is designed to be a part of your daily success routine. So let's get your motivation to a 10 and get you believing in you. Grab a snack and chew on today's lessons from a woman who went from struggling with an eating disorder for 20 years to becoming a successful hypnotherapist and best-selling author of four books. She's Marissa Peer, and here's my take on her top 10 rules of success. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one. Be prepared to make sacrifices. So the first thing that people who are incredibly successful do is they do what they hate. They are fully prepared to do what they hate to get to where they want to be. And, and people who fail, they will give up their dream before they do what they hate to do. And people who are very successful, they never, ever, ever wait for motivation. They do it because when you do it, you become motivated. A great writer won't go, well, I'll just wait till I'm really motivated to start writing this book. No, they get up at four in the morning, they don't want to, and they start to write, and then of course they become motivated. So you wake up in the morning and you go, you're not gonna go, yay, it's 5 a.m., I'm putting on my running shoes and going for a walk up Laurel Canyon. Of course you're not gonna do that. You're gonna wake up and go, God, I really hate working out, but Marissa said, Successful people do what they hate to get to where they want to be. Because of course, the wonderful thing is that when you do what you hate first enough times, it starts to become natural. Like, I've got to do my taxes, I'll do that first thing. I've got to confront someone, um, I'll do it first. And so I still, to this day, wake up and think, oh, I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to do it first because what I do want is to belong to that group of very, very successful people. So I know what the membership is. And every time I don't want to do something, I think I don't want to do it, but what I do want is to belong to that group, so I'm doing it first. And it's, it's a great way of thinking because it starts to move you around wanting to do it for all the right reasons. Many, many years ago, um, I met someone who wanted to be a rock star. That was his ambition. He actually particularly wanted to be a drummer. And he was a very young married man with two children to support. And he was going for a lot of auditions. And of course, all the auditions take place during the day. And every time he had a job, they wouldn't let him take time off. So he decided he would have to work nights in order to audition during the day. And the only job he could get was a job he hated. He was a taxi driver and he hated it, but he did it. But he just wasn't making enough money. So he thought, okay, I'll have to work in McDonald's. I get more money, I can work nights, I'm free to audition. And about a month before he'd applied to work in McDonald's, he'd been for an audition to be a drummer in a band. He didn't even know, know who the band was. And the day he was due to start working in McDonald's, which he absolutely hated even the thought of, he got a call to go, you know that band you auditioned for, it was actually Simple Minds, and now you're the drummer in Simple Minds, so he never worked in McDonald's or drove a cab again for the rest of his life. But when he told people that story, they'd all go, oh, I would never work in McDonald's. Oh my God, I'd never degrade myself by driving a cab around London. And I'm like, don't you think you're missing the point? His ability to do what he hated is what made him a rock star because he had to have his days free to rehearse and audition. But if he had your mindset, I'd never do that, he would never be a multi-millionaire rock star. It was because he was fully prepared to do what he hated, to swallow his pride, to keep his vision in mind, I want to be a rock star, I must be free for auditions. How can I do that? Well, I have to work as a cab driver and in a fast food restaurant, which I hate, but I'm gonna do it because it's gonna take me to my goal. And it did, but the people who laughed at him and said, I wouldn't do that, none of them are rock stars. Rule number two, stay positive. Secondly, we have this belief that our brain's job is to make us happy. Oh no, 
Your brain's job is to make you survive. It doesn't care if you're happy, it cares if you survive. So when you say, my job is killing me, this commute is stressing me out, I'm dying under the paperwork, it wants you to stop. And so because your brain's job is to move you towards pleasure, you've got to say, I love working weekends, even if it's not true. I love going to the gym. I'm so lucky I've got a baby that wakes me up at three in the morning. I know it sounds really Pollyanna, but you can trick your mind all the time going, I love it, I want it, I like it. And that's what Olympic athletes do when they're training, when they're getting up at 3 a.m. to run, they don't go, oh, this is great. But they also don't go, oh my God, I hate it. They go, yeah, this is gonna make me an Olympic athlete because they understand the minds need to move you towards pleasure and away from pain. And if you link pain to something, your mind will make you give it up really quickly. And people who fail give up their dreams because they link pain to them. But people who succeed meet their dreams. So they, think, they go, yeah, I want to work all weekend. I'm building a business. I want to work nights writing this book because I'm going to write a book. You can choose what to link pain and pleasure to. In fact, you can choose anything you like. But you know what you can't choose? What happens when you say things like, I hate my job, I hate my boss, my in-laws are killing me, this kid is driving me crazy. Sure, you can choose to say that, but you can't choose what happens when you are very negative. Rule number three, believe in yourself. Doesn't matter how talented you are, if you don't have self-belief, you're not gonna get anywhere. If you have extraordinary self-belief, very little talent, you can get everywhere. But if you have both, if you have talent and belief, it will actually make you unstoppable. Mm. Now, I work with a lot of football teams and a lot of football players, and a lot of those footballers come out of school at 14. They know they're going to be famous players. They don't really pursue an education. A lot of them have an extraordinary negative self-belief because they, they're only good at sport, which is a great shame. And um, one of my players at the moment has now become a fantastic commentator. But I do a lot of work with him to put in him that belief because he wasn't great at spelling and he wasn't great at school because he knew he was going to be a footballer. So belief without talent will take you far further than talent without belief. But if you have both, you can go far, but everyone can learn self-belief. Rule number four, express your feelings. You mentioned something about leaning into the feelings until the f you no longer need to yeah. feel them or yeah. until they go away? Feel the feeling until it no longer requires to be felt. Mm. Why, do we, why should we do that? So give me an example of a okay. feeling. So let's imagine <clears throat> you, you and your ex-wife are not getting on and you have a feeling of rage about the fact that she's trying to get your kid to call the new guy daddy and she's blocking you out and you feel so angry. You think, well, I mustn't feel angry, you know, she's doing it for the interest of my kid, or, and so I just drink the anger, and I drink the anger. And you see, with a feeling, it's the most real thing you have. A feeling is like a little thing. kid in yeah. a class going, notice me, I'm over <clears> here, <throat> and if you don't, they get more and more out of control. And so when you don't hmm. acknowledge your feelings, they regroup, and they regroup until they become outrage, rage coming out, and then suddenly, they go a bit crazy in the car park of a store or the line of a store because the mind says, I've got all this rage, wants to come out. Someone just cut into the line, take it out on them. And it's so ineffective because I have something I call triple A, which is be aware of your feeling. Most people have no idea what they feel. They go, I shouldn't feel jealous. I shouldn't feel envious. I shouldn't be furious with this kid who's keeping me up all night. So they're not aware of it, they certainly can't accept it, and they never get to articulate it. If you can say, you know, my wife's a good person, but actually I'm furious with what she's doing. It really hurts my feelings. That's why group therapy in places like <coughs> AA, the good thing is you yeah. get to say, sometimes I could quite cheerfully um, hurt my wife. I'm not going to, but I feel like, it. oh yeah, I feel like that too. Because when you can express your feeling, it goes away. Yeah. It goes away immediately. When but you when communicate you communicate it, yeah. Yeah, even to yourself. So if your mother in law is the absolute bitch from hell <laughs> and you can't say, by the way, Dorothy, you are the most horrible mother in law in the world, but you just go and shut yourself in the bathroom, turn on the taps, flutter on it, and say, Dorothy is a really unpleasant mother in law. And one you of my feel better Yeah, you feel so you much better yeah. because you're not saying it to them. It's <clears> like <throat> feelings are like gas. They're in or they're out, and they hurt much more when you keep them in. 
and you want to let them out. I mean, gas, I mean, obviously right in the middle of a meeting, but when you right. keep stuff in, it causes you pain. Rule number five, praise yourself. Here's something that will change your life if you make it familiar. Praise yourself. Say, I did a great job, I did a good job. You know, in the days of startup where you're running your own business, it may take two years before you see a profit. The only person who's going to praise you at the end of every day is you. So say, I did a great job, I did a really good job today. I love what I'm doing, I'm good at it. Make praise familiar. Rule number six, find your talent. Everyone's good at something. You know, you're not meant to be good at everything. It's no good being a jack of all trades and a master of none. So be really good at what you're good at and don't worry about what you're not good at because we're not all supposed to be good at the same thing. Find your talent, you know. Find out what you love to do. What you're meant to do lies directly behind and is absolutely linked to what you love to do. When I was a kid, actually, I loved writing little stories and illustrating them. And it's funny that now I am a very successful writer because I was always writing when I was a kid, but I never considered that as a career. But it, it kind of found me later. My daughter was always drawing and always... Um, in fact, she went to college to be a criminologist and then gave that up and became an artist because it's what she was meant to do. So find out what you love and be brilliant at it. Rule number seven, reverse your negative self-talk. You can't do that, you'll mess it up, you'll never get it right, you're just not good at that. I want you to change that voice to a cheerleader, a parent who dotes on you, a teacher who thinks you are the best thing in the world. And I want you to hear that voice saying, yay, you can do it, you're amazing, this is your area of excellence, you're good at this. You know, if you were a kid running a race at school, you'd want your parent to be there going, come on, come on, you're brilliant, you're amazing. If you were doing an assignment at school, you want the teacher or your parent to go, you're, you're very smart, you're really good at writing, this is your skill set. So I want you to become a loving parent to yourself, a praising teacher, a cheerleader that always goes, yes, you can do this, this is easy for you, this is a walk in the park, or you have the skills, the talent, you've, you've read that book, you know the answers, you've studied. So that's how you stop being your own worst critic. Flip it over, and if you're saying, I always mess it up, start to go, I get it right, I always forget things, I've got a great memory. That's the most important one. Rule number eight, don't take no for an answer. The other thing very successful people do is that they, they just don't take no for an answer. They get rejected, everyone gets rejected, but they come back. They do not take no for an answer. And, and you know, I remember working with Luther Vandross on one of my shows, and he, fortunately he's died now. And he said, you know, people call me an overnight success. Richard Gere said exactly the same thing. Do you know that overnight success? He said, it took me 12 years singing jingles for Kentucky Fried Chicken before I got a record deal. There is no overnight success. They get rejected, but they come back over and over and over again. Rule number nine, like yourself. Self-esteem means how much you like yourself. But when you like yourself, you also like other people too. You can't like yourself and not like other people. There's a lot of violence and aggression would end if we could just learn how to like ourselves and other people rather than feel dissatisfied with ourselves, which means, of course, you're dissatisfied with someone else. Because if you don't like yourself and you feel dissatisfied, you want everyone around you to be like that too. And then you feel a bit better because you're in the same company. If you don't feel very good and everyone around you is happy, then what you want, what people do is they tend to try and diminish everyone else or elevate themselves. But you can't elevate yourself if you don't like yourself. So a lot of the issues we have in schools, the violence, the truanting, the not achieving, could be cut in half if you just taught children to really like themselves and to have self-esteem. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip, is don't let your fears hold you back. When you focus on the worst possible outcome, you actually feel as if you are in that worst possible outcome. The only way to overcome a fear is instead of focusing on the worst possible outcome, to focus on the best possible outcome. I'm driving, it's foggy, it's dark, it's icy, I might skid off the road and kill myself. Or, I'm driving very carefully, I'm driving very slowly, I'm driving very cautiously because I'm going to be safe and I'm going to get home. See, that's the difference. You just have to give yourself different 
beliefs. The thing with fear always is you have two choices. Rationalize why you feel so terrible or talk yourself out. You know, I was on the beach with my daughter and there was a big dog and it was quite a scary dog and she didn't like this dog. And I said to her, you know, darling, when you don't like a dog, you get very scared and the dog doesn't like it either and he gets scared. So when you see a scary dog, turn your back to it, don't look at it because when you look at it, you're challenging it. And that's hard to do to turn your back on a dog. But if you turn your back, it's not a challenge. And she understood that. And I was always teaching her, when you have a fear, you have a choice. Oh my God, that dog's gonna bite me, attack me, hurt me. Or I'm gonna talk myself, I'm gonna turn away, I'm gonna breathe, I'm gonna be really calm. And that dog's just gonna go on its way. And it's the same with everything in life to do with fear. Rationalize why you feel so fearful or talk yourself out of it. I'll be fine, this is okay, everything's gonna work out perfectly, I'm okay. All of these fears hold you back and they don't have to because every fear you go through teaches you something. You see, if you go to a fun fair and go to those loop the loop rides, you can scream in terror or you can scream in excitement. And the fact that people put themselves through those rides means that at some level, we quite like fear. It challenges us to do more. It challenges us to grow more. So don't fear fear. Remember the only fear to fear is fear itself. Now I've got a really special bonus clip from Marissa on how to find your confidence that I think you're going to really enjoy. But before that, it's time for the three point landing questions. Time to move from just watching another video to actually taking action in your life or your business. And if you're feeling bold, answer these questions in the comments below. Here we go. Question number one, what negative self-talk are you saying regularly? Number two, what three things can you praise yourself for? And number three, what talent do you have that you're most proud of? How do you help somebody become more confident? Well, you know, I always look at babies, having had one myself, and babies are born with so much confidence. If you push the pram, people come and go, oh, your baby's so cute. They don't go, don't look at me. I don't like attention. They love attention. If ever you sat around a pool, you'll hear all these kids saying, Daddy, look at me, Mummy, look at me. So we come into the world loving attention. I mean, that's the first experience you get. Everyone looks at you, the doctor, the nurse, the midwife, parents, grandparents. So... What I tend to do is, is reactivate that innate confidence that you were born with and at the same time have a look at why you've lost your confidence. It's always, it's, it's, there will be something very specific that causes people to lose their confidence, but they don't really lose it. I believe it becomes submerged under all kinds of negative beliefs. And when you remove them, the confidence can come back. So I give people back what they were born with, which is better because then they don't go away and think well I've never had it they go away and think yeah of course I had it and I'm I can have it back again can anybody become more confident yeah, yeah absolutely the thing with your mind is and the mind is really simple your mind does what it absolutely thinks you want it to do so if you fear rejection if you've been humiliated at school or by you know as one of my clients was telling me that she went she went to work on her first day her boss shouted out across the floor she's useless she'll never be good at anything and when you're humiliated like that the number one job of your mind is to make sure you never experience that again so your mind is always working to move you away from anything that causes you pain and it has to find out what causes you pain to move you away from it so people who've been rejected then spend their life avoiding rejection, avoiding humiliation, and they won't put themselves forwards. But when you take that away and show them that you can't be rejected, the only person who can truly reject you is you. Somebody can not give you a job and not like you, but they can't really reject you because they don't really know you. And, then, and so I teach people that there, there's no such thing as rejection. Nobody can diminish you. And once you believe in yourself, then it doesn't really matter what other people think. And people get very concerned that that's arrogance, but it's not. It's just a self-esteem that radiates out from you. So you can't really be diminished. You can have bad days, but we can all feel incredibly confident and incredibly self-assured. And the great thing is that people love that. You want to be with people who are self-assured. Mm. So let me give you the one word secret to happiness. One word. This is all you need to be happy. The most important word ever. If you had to think of 
one word that's most important to you or that sums you up or that would be kind of like a little beacon? If you like this video, check out the one I made on five tricks to help you achieve unstoppable self-confidence. I think you'll enjoy it. The link is right there next to me. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. Confidence is the willingness to try. My character and my personality, a lot of that came from martial art.